ladies and gentlemen, this is the China Observer of Sasagawa Peace Foundation. Yamamoto, I will be your MC. Today, I have invited my colleague, Mr. Kobayashi, from the Securities Research Group. Uh, at the end of uh, uh, last month, uh, he presented his article entitled The Chinese uh, FBR Operating Possibility of Accelerating Nuclear Arms Race. Uh, welcome, Mr. Kobayashi. Thank you for inviting me. Well, Chinese fast breeder reactor development, uh, it is the focus of attention these days. But before that, in mid-October, I believe it was, U.S. Pentagon regularly submits uh, to the Congress uh, regarding the military and security developments. And this report was announced in mid-October. And this uh, FBR uh, in China is referred to in the report. Come to think of it, think of it uh, I think there are many different types of uh, nuclear reactors. Uh, now, the Chinese FBR, what is it? Fast breeder reactor. What is it? Fast breeder reactor, as you said, uh, amongst many different uh, nuclear reactors, FBR is uh, regarded as a dream nuclear reactor, very advanced uh, nuclear reactor. It produces uh, fuels more than it consumes uh, in generating uh, power. And of course, uh, Japan uh, developed uh, this. Uh, up until the 1990s, the West uh, uh, was more advanced in terms of technology. In the case of an ordinary nuclear reactor, water is used to cool the fuel. But in the case of FBR, the nuclear fission activities are very fast. Therefore, the uh, liquid sodium is used as coolant. The uh, sodium control is very difficult because sodium has a nature that when it comes in contact with air, uh, it becomes combustible. Therefore, the controlling sodium is very difficult. Even in France, uh, they have uh, gone through various uh, tests of FBR. More than 30 times accidents happened, and they had to stop the operation. In Japan, we have the project called Monju. We have the prototype uh, reactor of uh, FBR, and it had an accident of uh, leakage of uh, liquid uh, sodium, so the uh, development is uh, suspended. So in the West, uh, the uh, development is either stopped or suspended. So now China and Russia are taking the leadership in the development. But there is one thing that you have to be careful about the technology. Within the reactor, uh, the uh, nuclear substance is uh, generated. It is plutonium-239. Uh, more than 90% of uh, uh, plutonium is uh, generated. It is called super-grade plutonium. Uh, it can be used as uh, the uh, fuel for nuclear uh, reactors, but uh, it can be converted into nuclear weapon as well. So China, where is the true intention? Is it developing it? Uh, as uh, uh, civilian use, or is there a alter ulterior motive of uh, converting to a uh, military use? So FBR development in China is gathering much attention of the world, especially from the viewpoint of uh, NPT, nuclear non-proliferation. Kobayashi-san now mentioned that in the past, uh, the West uh, developed the FBR, including Japan. Regarding Monju project, uh, he made some reference. Uh, Please tell me simply, what has become of Japanese Monju project in 2016? It, it was decided that uh, decommissioned. So it is now in the process of uh, moving toward dismantling for the uh, ultimate uh, decommissioning. So FBR Monju will not become operational F as FBR. Even with Japanese uh, new, uh, technology, the FBR development was very difficult. Was it the case? Yes. It is right. Now the plutonium-239. Plutonium can be many different kinds. Plutonium-239 uh, is uh, produced uh, in Monju. Uh, 
and also in Japan, we have various uh, nuclear reactors, and plutonium-239 cannot be produced uh, in ordinary nuclear reactors. In the case of ordinary nuclear reactors, uh, spent fuel is reprocessed. In Japan, we have a reprocessing plant uh, technology. For example, in Aomori Prefecture, Rokkasho Village, uh, we have the reprocessing uh, facility being planned and uh, constructed. So the, in the case of no, normal reactors, a plutonium percentage is a little more than 50 percent, plutonium 238 uh, or uh, 242. The evil, even number of plutonium uh, can be included in the plutonium uh, produced in uh, normal uh, nuclear reactors. So 238, if you don't do anything about it, it uh, becomes, uh, it, it goes through nuclear fission on its own and uh, heat is generated. The reprocessed, uh, proce uh, reprocessed uh, plutonium is uh, converted into the, the, the military use uh, because of the heat generated. The uh, detonation uh, device uh, can be damaged. So uh, compared with that, in the case of FBR, plutonium is uh, reacted within the reactor. Plutonium 239 proportion, as I said, is more than 90 percent. Uh, very little impurities. It can be stored over a long period of time. It can be converted into military use. So, so if module were operational in Japan too, we would uh, be able to uh, have a super grade, uh, weapon grade uh, plutonium uh, would be uh, produced in large number. So, because of the situation, there is an inspection agreement with IAEA. There is a detailed negotiation in Japan. Japan, we have a detailed uh, system of uh, control and uh, management of uh, plutonium in the eyes of the international community. I fully understand. Now, in the case of FBR, it's not necessarily used for uh, military use alone, but uh, if it becomes uh, prof uh, successful, uh, it can uh, produce uh, plutonium in a very efficient, uh, efficiently. But technology wise, it's difficult, so usually you don't do it, but uh, they dare pursue this uh, course because uh, they have the energy related issue and uh, there may be other issues. That is the viewpoint contained in the article of uh, Kobayashi san. Yes, in the case of Japan, within the reactor, the nuclear fuel substance uh, is uh, produced for the self sufficiency of energy. energy. It's very meaningful. Natural uranium is abundant in the world, but the uranium resource could be effectively utilized and uh, it can be uh, used as uh, the fuel for producing uh, plutonium in the rea reactor. It's going to be a very effective uh, nuclear fuel cycle. So that's why Japan included West uh, try to develop it. Now, the development thereof is very difficult. Even U.S., even France, U.S., France are the developed countries in terms of uh, nuclear power generation. In Japan, too, FBR, which was very difficult, uh, was uh, suspended, but China is uh, now working on it. What is the current state of development of FBR in China? Well, in 2010, they operated a small-scale FBR, and they have the track record of operating the uh, FBR in a very small scale, though. Now, across from Taiwan, in Fujian province, uh, uh, they are in the process of con con constructing two FBR facilities, and one of the two may have become operational according to the sat satellite uh, image. Uh, so the scale is uh, 600,000 kilowatts, about two times uh, the greater the scale of Monju. Well, Japan is an insular nation, so uh, uh, when heated uh, nuclear reactor has to be cooled and the seawater uh, is used, uh, that's why nuclear power plants are located uh, in coastal regions. But in the case of uh, uh, Fujian province, uh, is that because across uh, the strait from Taiwan? Well, in the case of FBR, water is not used for coolant. It uses liquid uh, sodium, so it doesn't have to be built in the coastal region. The reason why they chose a Fujian province, we don't know. But the development itself, construction itself, is going very smoothly. I would like you to see the pictures. So, 
This image shows the building housing the FBR. In this building, according to this satellite image, the roof is completed. So this is almost complete. We can say that. And this was taken around this time of the last year, uh, 23rd of December last year. This was the status at that time. And in that picture, uh, you can see a ventilation stack boxed in red. And uh, above that, uh, quite a clear uh, shadow is shown. That means that this stack is quite high. And uh, a steam generated within the reactor is uh, ventilated from this stack. And Fujian FBR, uh, this is not uh, unique only to FBR in Fujian. Usually there is a high stack in the uh, nuclear power plants. And uh, in comparison to this, could you look at the next image, although this is unclear, the resolution in the first image was uh, 50 centimeters, and image two resolution is three meters, therefore definition is quite poor. On top of the stack, uh, maybe you can see white floating substance, some thing that looks like that uh, in yellow box, yes, uh, you can see white floating thing. And we used AI to process this image. And we asked the nuclear uh, reactor uh, expert to take a look at it. And he said this is uh, uh, steam coming out of uh, this. Uh, this indicates that uh, uh, reactor is already operating, be it in full operation or trial operation. And uh, heat exchanger is used. It's like a tank with uh, water. And steam in great abundance is generated to use uh, to operate a turbine. And the steam coming out of this stack uh, indicates that the heat is transferred to heat exchanger. And this is the evidence of the operation, be it trial or fall, uh, of this reactor. So uh, already uh, activity uh, operation as a uh, nuclear reactor is already underway. You said the capacity is twice as large as uh, Monju. And, uh, um, the FBR of this size has been implemented by any country. Yes, Russia, uh, 800,000 kilo uh, watts uh, size, which is larger than this uh, Chinese uh, reactor, and uh, trial run, and also the initial uh, lo initially loaded. Uh, fuel has been replaced by Russia already. So it is said that Russia is most advanced. Regarding this Chinese facility, uh, it is said that uh, uh, Russia has provided technical advice and fuels. Uh, based on the close collaboration with Russia, China has been able to enhance the technology level to this extent. extent. So in this sense, we have to uh, closely watch the development of this facility from the perspective of the collaboration between the two countries as well. Yes, Russia-China, a collaboration you mentioned, nuclear power or nuclear reactor development. The cooperation between China and history has a long history. May I understand it that way? Not necessarily long industry because there was a conflict between China and Soviet Union, so the cooperation was suspended for a while. However, since Russian Federation was created, uh, Russia has been quite aggressive, assertive vis-a-vis -vis China because Russia uh, has better technology, and that is actually a fact. So uh, providing nuclear fuel and the technology needed to operate uh, FBR, the advice in that area has been provided by Russia quite actively. Now, China's FBR, the initial uh, load of uh, fuel has been provided by Rosatom, Russian state-owned atomic energy corporation. So uh, the fuel uh, has been provided uh, by Rosatom according to the press release by Russia. Usually, we don't get information from Chinese side, but according to Russian information, we can say that already it has come to the stage where uh, fuel is uh, provided initially. So uh, if you compare the co 
uh, the, the two countries cooperating together, do you think uh, China will be able to move to operation quite smoothly, efficiently? If that happens, what happens? Well, FBR here, if uh, China becomes successful in operating FBR, then newly created uh, nuclear fuel, highly uh, pure uh, plutonium-239, will be uh, extracted through reprocessing. And within this reactor, super-grade plutonium source can be generated. However, state within the reactor includes a lot of uh, impurities. Therefore, uh, purity level has to be raised at the uh, separate uh, factory. Therefore, after that, if the reactor uh, becomes operational fully, then it will be uh, compatible with the Pentagon's reports. A stable production of uh, weapon grade uh, plutonium. Now, the next topic the FBR operation is quite difficult for China because they need uh, technology from Russia. Even America, Japan, and France have not been able to succeed in operating FBR. Therefore, uh, China today, uh, do you think this is going to be successful? Well, in order to explain that, I would like to use the picture once again. And this is the history of Monju. And Monju, the first uh, criticality was achieved. That is the start of the operation. That was in uh, 1994, April. And after that, uh, uh, in uh, July uh, 1995, the, because of the fire caused by leaking of sodium used for cooling reactor, the suspension of operation started in December 1995. Therefore, liquid in so sodium management is very uh, difficult technically. As I said earlier, a uh, French FBR during the the demonstration test uh, 33 times because of the sodium leakage causing uh, small fires, the operation was suspended for a while. In the case of Japan, because of the uh, very severe public outcry, the prolonged period of suspension occurred. Uh, therefore, the management of liquid sodium is the most difficult part of the operation of FBR. In uh, 2010, as I said, China uh, started uh, successfully the testing of small uh, FBR. Actually, operation rate uh, for one year, how many days were operational? It is only 1% of operation rate in that case. Uh, therefore, even for China, this only 1% of utilization rate yes for china it is very dif it was very difficult and uh, technology advice coming from russia thanks to that to what extent china has gained a uh, technology uh, gain uh, for operation fbr that is one point and another point is that uh, uh, this is uncompleted uh, technology for china or russia we do not not know that technology uh, which we don't know whether human beings can uh, control. However, uh, China and uh, Russia are not necessarily democratic countries. I wouldn't go as far as to say authoritarian governments, but uh, small accidents may be uh, uh, ignored in order to continue uh, operation. So that is uh, one aspect of technology. Therefore, uh, difficulty of managing uh, liquid sodium combined with the uh, characteristics of the countries with the strong state power, whether or not these two combinations uh, can overcome the difficulty. About 11 years ago, I was posted in Beijing, and on the occasion of military parade, I have seen the uh, proud development of uh, nuclear energy in civilian sector. They made a big appeal, and then the general citizenry uh, agreed with that, and they responded uh, in a very proactive way. That was quite impressive. This time round, recently, international situation has changed, and uh, because of that, uh, uh, there is an advanced cooperative relationship between China and Russia, considering all of, all these factors. Listening to your uh, remarks, uh, 
our monju or uh, attempts uh, by U.S. and uh, France, uh, we spend so much time. So the long time is uh, necessary for China. They know that it's going to take a lot of time. Yes, they are aware of that. Now, is there any other nuclear arms race-related、uh, uh, developments? Are there any signs of uh, uh, new developments? You are the expert on、uh, satellite image analysis.、Uh, In the Saboriga, you have seen the nuclear power plants in Ukraine. So, Chinese、uh, nuclear arms race, are there any new symptoms about the further development? Outside the FBR, the、uh, reprocessing、uh, plant of uh, nuclear fu spent fuels,、uh, likes of、uh, Rokam, Rokam, Rokashomura, Aomori Prefecture. In Gansu Province,、uh, there is a、uh, construction project going on. By 2025,、uh, th this plant is going to be operational, according to some information. Most probably, there. Just like、uh, Japan, there are normal nuclear、uh, reactors. So, from normal reactors, uh, uh, they have the spent fuel, and then、uh, spent fuel from FBR. They would be reprocessed. They will be consolidated in this、uh, reprocessing plant in Gansu province. Another point that I'm concerned about is、uh, Xinjiang Uyghur. Autonomous uh, uh, region. There is a testing ground in Lopno, testing ground, and there is a, a new underground tunnels being constructed. So it is、uh, completed from about、uh, 2021. It has become rather clear from the satellite uh, image uh, analysis uh, uh, we have.、Uh, Seen that、uh, in the past,、uh, hitherto five tunnels, five tunnels were dug, but、uh, now the sixth、uh, channel is being、uh, developed.、Uh, as you saw in the picture of、uh, FBR, there is a high stack in Lobnor. So, what is the reason of high stack being、uh, built? The reason is that、uh, together with the、uh, Nuclear test.、Uh, you have to release、uh, radioactive rare gas. But after all, China has a very strong state authority. But、uh, if、uh, explosion is uh, uh, associated with test,、uh, nuclear test uh, testing, uh, uh, there is a high barrier. And、uh, So pre-criticality testing, not associated with the explosion. Maybe that kind of new facility is built in Lopno nuclear、uh, test ground. But pre-criticality test has a possibility uh, of uh, going uh, to fail. That means uh, uh, it may explode. That's why they have the、uh, high high rise stack so that if radioactive rare gas is generated, it has to be vented out. So that is、uh, that may be the explanation of the construction of new facility in Lopnol. Another point. We haven't done the analysis of the image, but American think tanks usually say that Gansu Province and in inland provinces,、uh, the silos,、uh, many silos are built for ICBM. So,、uh, other research institutes have done the satellite imagery analysis, and they note that. So, including all of these,、uh, FBR, fast breeder reactor, is about to go operational. And then the new plutonium can be provided from that, and it explains all those uh, uh, unsolved uh, elements. Now, in the case of FBR, plutonium is、uh, produced two, two, three, not two, three, eight, but two, three, nine. So even number uh, is uh, okay, but the the odd number two, three, nine. Is、uh, problematical. So if、uh, that is、uh, generated, that is、uh, produced, then the、uh, it can become the warheads of、uh, ICBM ballistic missiles. Pentagon, American Pentagon, also refers to that compared with、uh, Russia and United States.、Uh, Chinese、uh, number of、uh, warheads、uh, would be、uh, less, but、uh, in a couple of years, uh, uh, China will catch up with the United States in terms of the number of warheads. So the source of that, the fuel source of that,、uh, could be the FBR.
produced uh, plutonium-239. That is the possibility. Yes, exactly, as you said. Let me supplement in a little more detail. As of now, I think uh, China has uh, about uh, uh, has that certain level of uh, warheads. Uh, the uh, uh, Stockholm-based uh, research institute uh, has uh, very reliable data, and uh, uh, according to their uh, assessment, uh, 410 warheads are in the hands of China, and about one ton plutonium is in the possession of China. And if they use that, uh, the recent uh, nuclear warheads. Uh, per warhead, 3.5 kilograms uh, uh, would be about the uh, uh, amount of plutonium necessary. So about uh, 300 uh, warheads can be produced. So then uh, adding all these numbers, uh, 700 warheads. And from 2027, FBR as well as uh, another FBR plant uh, produced uh, uh, plutonium-239 can be obtained. So if you add that by 2035, China will have uh, uh, the uh, 1,500 uh, warheads. At least they, they have a plutonium uh, to be used for that. So the by 2020, by 2035, 1,500 warheads uh, mentioned in the congressional report. I think uh, uh, this uh, can be explained by the uh, develop development of uh, plutonium uh, production, nuclear weapon development, as well as increased production of uh, nuclear weaponry. Well, Japan is a perifer peripheral country, and uh, not only for Japan, for the entire world, it's a f serious problem. This is the issue that we have to closely watch. Come to think of it, now China has a special treatment from NPT. No NPT, and China is a member of uh, MPT. And originally, P5, shall I say, the uh, before the treaty, nuclear uh, reactors were held by China. So regarding Japan, out, outside P5, in developing uh, nuclear energy, we had a very stringent uh, international undertakings. And uh, there is a web of uh, inspection and surveillance uh, from the international community, and data has to be uh, uh, public and so forth. But compared with that, uh, China does not have any obligation. Am I right? Yes, what you say is right. P5, at that point in time, those countries are successful in nuclear explosion at that time. So U.S., Russia, China, France, and U.K., these are so-called P5. Other than those countries, in the name of a peaceful utilization, nuclear energy, nuclear technology is to be used, and in doing so, it has to be subject to uh, the inspection of IAEA. It is a safeguard uh, measures. But uh, uh, China is P5, therefore it is uh, voluntary, not obligatory. But uh, NPT has Article 6, and the nuclear nations have uh, obligation to uh, do in good faith the uh, safeguard measures and so forth. So uh, looking toward the nuclear disarmament, uh, there is an international leadership which has to be exhibited by P5. So at least uh, military use or civilian use, there has to be a distinction between the two. Other countries do that in the case of uh, France. Plutonium, re re plutonium is uh, c produced. The voluntarily, it is subject to IAEA's inspection. So in the case of China, uh, they have consistently said that it is for the civilian use. If they say so, then China should take an initiative in receiving uh, international inspection from IAEA, and uh, they should prove that uh, it is transparent. It is only for the civilian use. If they can prove that, there is no problem. China and Russia Indeed, if they are developing FBR for the purely civilian purpose, of course, Japan and other countries will not uh, be, uh, not have right to intervene. So, in what way uh, to the international community, China is going to prove prove this is for civilian use? 
So uh, th there is a room for Japan to uh, cooperate here because uh, Japan is perhaps the only uh, country uh, as a non-nuclear power that is allowed to use technology to reprocess spent fuel to extract plutonium. And also technologically, Japan is well versed in uh, this technology. Therefore, as a neighbor, uh, neighboring country, uh, we should uh, call upon uh, China to accept international uh, inspection by IAEA and so forth. Yes, I totally agree. China usually says that since uh, several hundred or thousand years ago, China has been a great power. It is a responsible country to the international community. That has been set by China itself. And also, it is a permanent member of the UN Security Council. If there is no ulterior motive, I think they should be more transparent, I think. So this is not the issue of nuclear weapon. Rather, this is a nuclear reactor, FBR. Therefore, there is nothing to hide. So if that's the case, then the disclosure is necessary. By so doing, China can gain more credibility and transparency. And also, as a neighboring country, uh, as you said, Japan has actually the capability which can help. Therefore, if this is not the military development, then this can be one area or one area of cooperation, or one tool for cooperation. Uh, for the time being, because of the Ukraine war, Japan, America, Russia, Europe, uh, we were cooperating in space development. By the same token, maybe this is, is an area for possible cooperation. Yes, Japan has a monju experience. We have a very good cooperation with the IAEA. We have a close collaborative relationship and uh, plutonium generated uh, in the uh, reactor uh, we have developed the technology to monitor the process so maybe technology can be uh, proposed to China this kind of cooperation is possible and uh, if this is really for civilian use in the case of China then cooperation between Japan and China would benefit them as well. So how China will respond to such a proposal? I think that is one aspect we have to watch. Yes, Mr. Kobayashi has just mentioned, indeed, it is Japan is not a nuclear superpower. We do not have a nuclear weapons. However, there is a role that Japan can play, a major role. At this juncture, the activity that would uh, raise doubts on transparency, and particularly this is being done through cooperation uh, with Russia, so that more they try to hide the fact, the more silence they try to keep, that more a concern would be raised in the international community. Therefore, maybe China should become more responsible power to become more transparent and to cooperate with us so that uh, they can use the technology for the future of the human kind. Now, on the other hand, I have been saying this on various occasions, the cooperation between military and civilian is their motto. So the civilian uh, technology can be used for military and vice versa. In the case of Japan, uh, military and civilian are completely separated according to many people. However, not only China, but also the US or the Europe as well, but particularly uh, China, uh, military and civilian are mingled together, blended uh, seamlessly together. So what we have been saying uh, between us uh, would not be necessarily conveyed correctly to people in China. I have a concern about that. I said that transparency is lacking and that country is our neighbor. Therefore, uh, we have to continue to uh, pay attention to the activity of China going forward. Kobayashi-san used a satellite image. 
and the area covered by Ukraine war and also area covered by China, particularly focusing on nuclear development. Kobayashi-san has been conducting analysis using a satellite image. Going forward, we hope that uh, he will come up with uh, new discoveries, not too many. We don't want to have uh, new, too many discoveries, but uh, I hope you will continue your analysis for the purpose of peace and the development of science technology in the future. So thank you very much for your uh, very insightful explanation. Anything to add? No, nothing. I s spoke too much. Now, China Observer is going to provide such information in this way, focusing on China, uh, security environment surrounding Japan. We would like to open up our eyes to this issue and share what we have learned with you, the audience. Thank you very much for uh, joining us. Thank you.